whatever you choose. This is Telus time. Okay, we're going by Telus time, so um, I would uh, welcome you all to the first council meeting of the new year. It's a very brief council meeting, and because it's the first one, we call it special. <laughs> Which is the only reason, the other reason it's special is because it wasn't normally scheduled and we have to uh, pass um, a number or adopt a number of bylaws. But uh, before we do that, I want to wish you all a happy new year. We look forward to uh, a bright and prosperous and uh, fruitful new year. Innovations and progress and great things for Oak Bay in the future. So, so uh, we have an agenda bylaws for adoption. There's three of them. Uh, they're in the green sheets, and what we need uh, is a motion to adopt. So we, uh, I think, I'm not even, do we have to push them towards us, do you think? Well, the only, well, at least have them on. Okay, so let's put them all on. Let's just put them, put them all on. Good. John, there you go. So they're all recording, but we don't really need to have them amplify, right? Because yeah. people can, can you hear me back there, Gord? <laughs> all right, we're okay there. All right, four, five, five, three. I'll move it. Move for adoption. Second. Again, all in favor? Opposed? One, two opposed. Okay. Oh, sorry. There was, um, yeah. Is there any discussion on this at all before we no. no. That dis the discussion is at the second meeting. It's just a formality. Yep. Sorry, uh, the, the, the two naysayers were John and Kevin. Kevin. Okay. All righty. Um, two, that's passed. Four, five, five, four, please. Adopt. Can we have the same mover and second? Sure. Just that it would be easier okay. on his. Uh, sure. <laughs> it's, okay. All right. it's okay. All right, same mover and second. All, right. uh, all in favor? Opposed? Same people opposed. Thank you. And then finally, 4554, five, four. same mover and second. Yeah, thank you. 4555. Five, five. That's 4555, five, five. yep. And uh, we've looked at this also. And this is the one where we, uh, under special circumstances, that we uh, can extend a, an appointment uh, on the Parks and Rec Commission uh, in uh, exceptional circumstances. All right. and we have a mover and seconder. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, and I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same mover and seconder. Same mover and seconder. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. Now, we go into our uh, regular meeting of the Committee of the Whole, and you might, uh, before we get going, you might notice that there's a bit of a change in the way that we've uh, set things up here, and it's to make things a little more informal. I wrote to um, our staff and uh, just asked them over the weekend when I set this up to have a look at it, and in that email, which I'll read part of it too, I uh, set out the goals, some of the goals. They include, so there's probably a lot more goals. Having a setting that is open and inviting, that says we are collaboratively, collaboratively working together. Another goal, creating an informal setting that is distinct from council meetings. So quite often when we sit up there, it's maybe the whole, they don't, people who come into the room don't know if we're council, legislative body, or we're here to, you know, have a discussion and debate with the community. Making the audience feel included in the process. How do you feel out there? All right. It seems there's a lot of nodding. And then reducing uh, what some people would call an, an intimidation factor. You know, when we have, uh, you know, speakers come to the microphone, and sometimes they're, they're not used to that. So, and then also, too, another goal is to ensure that you can be heard. So anytime, Gord, uh, you, you don't hear us? Pardon? <laughs> Say pardon. Good. That would be good. So, uh, and it should be a little informal. Now, typically, uh, I'll, I'll start by making it more informal. <laughs> I only wore this because we had um, we had a photo shoot earlier tonight, our uh, picture. So, uh, yeah. And what we're going to do after we uh, use this setup, and we'll see how it works. Patricia, I think, said that um, her memory was that this was this was how uh, committees A and B were set up. Uh, a long time ago. There we go. Not that long. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years ago. So this is kind of back to the future. All right. Uh, so, and uh, if any of you want to give feedback, uh, just let it, uh, one, when I was setting this up, I was kind of 
wondering where the staff should be. One, I, I didn't work into it, where should Steve sit? And so we left it to him <laughs> to where he sat. So, I, but I yeah, John. Have been, it would be nice if I didn't have to have my back to part of the people if we could reorganize it. So yeah, several yeah have a little more of a, of a semicircle like this. Yeah, right now you don't have anyone really at your back. Off your left ear a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's Ray. So, uh, it's and what you'll notice though, is the idea is that when speakers or presenters or you know some an architect comes, these four seats at the end will invite people to come up and join us at the table, so we can. Uh, uh, you won't definitely won't have your back to them at that point. All right, good. So let's move into the recreation uh, section uh, and turn it over to Councillor Nay and uh, Ray. Did you want to join us at the uh, the table in case there's some questions? Thank you. Good, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we have two sets of uh, minutes here, and uh, so does anybody have any questions? I had one question that I think Ray has already answered for me, but uh, I really wanted to know how many uh, how many of the reduced youth passes were sold. Remember we reduced them for a period of time? And I gather they've done. Uh, yeah, through the chair, uh, I did overhear a conversation. I didn't specifically ask for that information, but uh, my understanding and overhearing staff talk about that today, in fact, was that our sales in December were uh, up significantly over December of last year on those passes. Mm -hmm. Three or four times over we normally sell in that month, so I would suggest that the um, objective of these stuff till now is to achieve the Terrific. I sold like a dozen in the last couple of hours. That helps you. <laughs> <laughs> That's Doug, one of our valued employees from the Red uh, the <laughs> Okay, so does that take care of that? That's, thank you very much, right? So I don't know who was first, but I can help her now. Thank you. Um, Councilman, just a question on follow up. Under the Carnarvon Park Redevelopment Committee update, there was a, a meeting scheduled for the Tuesday, November 22nd, and I was just curious as to the follow-up <coughs> from that meeting. As to the follow-up from that meeting, any updates? Uh, through the chair, there's uh, since that meeting, uh, we have not scheduled another meeting. The uh, proponents were to go away and kind of get their uh, plans updated and revised. Contact us when they thought they were ready to meet again, which uh, everybody sort of thought would be in January. And I haven't heard back from them yet. At that meeting, they did uh, uh, take a lot of feedback back from the subcommittee and uh, basically uh, were to take that information away and sort of uh, tweak their plans a little bit. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to, uh, further to the um, the reduced rates uh, and specific reference to the youth passes, um, uh, for future years we uh, may wish to consider something of the nature of uh, what Saanich has done, which is offer a, free, a variety of free programming, I think for the first week of January, just so people can test out recreation programs. I don't know the details of it, but um, I did notice a little uh, a news item recently in the paper. Are you aware of that? Yeah. Um, anyway, it's just, a, it's just a thought, and um, I think that we're definitely heading in the right direction, and I think encouraging youth to participate more actively in our recreational programming is, is definitely the right thing to do. But uh, just to keep it in mind for future reference, um, might want to find out how that worked for them and um, you know, monitor that. I have a few points and, and questions, uh, uh, and that is, uh, I noticed on uh, page two to begin with, under program reports, etc., uh, there was a report <coughs> on the success of the Fall Family Festival at Henderson, October, and something similar is, is uh, being planned for Easter. Um, it was very high level. An example of what went on in the Fall Family Festival. Uh, through the chair, Your Worship, I'm sorry, I don't have any information okay, on fair enough. Event, uh, but I can uh, get to you. Okay. Uh, <coughs> because one of the things that uh, we all talked about a little bit at the levy, because I'm going to tie this into the January 1st event, 
is that uh, it would be nice if staff were to come up with some uh, options for next year's levy that might be a greater emphasis on family fun, maybe moving it into the morning like they've done in Sydney, and I am told that's quite successful, um, where you have some kind of free uh, time for families in the pool or skating or jumping castle in the indoor field, something like that. So, and, and uh, Ray, I know you've, you've been giving some thought to that, so I encourage you to, <coughs> kind of, you know, sometime middle of this year, later part of this year, latter part of this year, to, to come up with some ideas for us, because I think we'd all like to see something more vibrant, more family-oriented that attracts Oak Bay residents as much as anything. Right. right now, I don't know, I didn't do any numbers, but I would suspect that a very significant percentage of the people who are uh, there from out of town, and it's always good to meet people from out of town. But I think it's more important that we encourage more. So, okay. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, on the personnel report, uh, I see Caroline Wallace, or, uh, Lawrence was the uh, uh, successful applicant, and the council can welcome her. For, for one of the, the new positions here, sports programmer. Um, the next one's here. Yes, uh, there, is, there was on page four, discussion was raised regarding the cost of allotment garden plots in comparison with other municipalities. Uh, or, <coughs> do you have any sense yet of where we stand generally with regards to other allotment rates? Uh, for the chair, my recollection of the discussion was that uh, we were certainly not on the high side, that there was potentially going to move up. I also recall, and I stand to be corrected, but I believe there are two different sizes of plots currently, and there was some talk <coughs> that I think, I think the Commission's recommendation was to advise this year the folks that have the larger plots that there would be uh, they'd be paying a little bit more money next year. Um, so basically give them a year's notice that those larger plots would be worth more money. Yeah, and because I, I think over the years it's been generally the position of council that we want to try to encourage more allotment gardens throughout the community wherever we can find appropriate space. So, Do we, uh, we have a, is there a requirement that they be okay residents? I think we had that discussion some years ago and I don't remember what the other thing was. Doug seems to think so. I filled in for the parks office for, for when we allocated over all the blocks this summer. And um, the, I don't recall the pricing on it, um, but it was really competitive because we did sure. a comparison between the other, other uh, municipalities. Um, but there was a lot of pushback in regards to the size of it the blocks. It was a residential requirement. But they were all residents. Now, Henderson Expansion Project at the bottom of page four, is there any update on that? Uh, just to say that the application has been submitted. Yep. Uh, the province has it in email and hard copy form, yep. as does uh, our MLA's office. Oh, good. And uh, we will. Is there a timeline? Crossed, uh, I don't think that in the program guide there was an indication okay. or a date, but I would suspect it'll be uh, a couple of months anyways if you were like yourself. Okay. Yeah, can I just pause for a second? Related to the allotment garden plots, I can wait if you want. Might as well do it right when yeah, okay. um, Just again, further to this, I, I do think it's a really important um, uh, issue, and um, uh, as we know, that local food production in general is something to be encouraged. Um, and um, and we, I think there's there's a great deal of research now that uh, has proven the bonuses to both to residents and to communities as a whole. Um, and I think it's really important that uh, cost aside, that we try to be proactive and creative about where we can actually find space. And I know there has been, you know, there's been some difficulties in that regard in the past. I'd really encourage us and certainly maybe the Environment Committee would be um, the appropriate body to, to review this, to see where else and how else we can encourage that kind of local food production in Obey. I just think that we need to, to focus on it and move forward on it. Surely there is more than just one place around Boker, but you know, around Boker Creek that uh, would be uh, appropriate. 
create for a lot more. Everything is environment. Just, but I just wanted to add Maybe that because be um, with you. Yes. I, I don't think <laughs> we should let it go. And I, I do know that um, Willow School has just been allowed some money yep. in yeah. and all that for for some uh, community gardens right there. So um, I mean, you said it to the committee; they can look into that. Right? Yes, yeah, I have a question regarding the allotment law as well for me. Yeah, uh, that's just, I'm yeah. curious, what is, how, what's the ratio in terms of people wanting a lot with lots versus the one how many we have currently? Do we have any, uh, like is there a waiting list? Is there a I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. I, I can find out. Yeah, yeah, back to you. Waiting list? Yeah, I'm yeah. curious if the command is going to help guide some of the, you know, I think yeah. in the past we've been told there's always a waiting list. list. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure there's some. Do you know? know? There had about two dozen people <laughs> on the wait list. <laughs> okay. okay. And uh, I believe they waited greater than a year, could be much longer. Uh, and um, we allocated however many plots this year, and there still continues to be one of those. Okay, there's a demand. Okay, there is a oh, demand. Is and and sure and the okay, yeah. okay. Thanks. Just to reinforce the comments by Councillors um, Copley and Murdoch, there are some, I think, real opportunities with the new redevelopment of Bay High School and other school properties. Um, and if there are any uh, vacant school properties as well um, that you have just been in use, I mean, these are all huge, have huge potential for a lot of the gardens to improve the production. Yeah, and Uplands has a, has a big play area, which I don't think they have the number of kids here anymore, so that might be something we can partner with, Ray, that you can think about bringing up uh, with the school board and coming up with Then the, on the December 7th, I noticed that the MS Society uh, was asking for a small sound system. Was, was that, do I read this right, and that small sound system was rejected? Um, uh, Jim, my understanding is that <laughs> they, the event was approved under the same, uh, yeah. same guidelines as in the past year, and that my understanding is the is that a small sound system? That's what I understand. So they were grant that was granted for the 2011, and that was going to be allowed for the 2012. Yes. And it was the increase in the sound system that was of some concern. I believe so. And, and the gentleman who I believe acted on behalf of the residents has been contacted and, and advised of uh, the decision, and uh, he and the propon proponent have been. Uh, I think they already had each other's contact information, but they've just been uh, told that things are coming up again, and I think they're proactively chatting with each other. So well, we don't good. anticipate any issues there. Well, we'll I think we, in my view, I think we should encourage family events and charitable events, but at the same time balancing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the next on that same page, uh, under reports, there's just a one line there about the uh, third line manager of park services report. Leaf pickup will continue until the end of December. Um, my, my question is, is, is there some way that uh, you can have some kind of continual updating on the web as to where you are and where you're about to pick up? Because I haven't, I may not be aware of that if you've done anything like that recently, but I, because one of the questions I had uh, well, during the election, you may, a lot of you had is, when are my leaves going to be picked up, right? And that's, that's a, to some extent, uh, it's, it's difficult to predict because it depends if the leaves fall, if it's wet, da -da -da, how long it takes. So there's got to be some flexibility. On the other hand, it would be nice to be able to go somewhere and say, okay, I'm going to type in my street, Oliver. When's that coming around? Oh, well, that's coming around on, on such and such a day. It's, it's just to, to keep that in the loop now. I guess it would take some admin because people would have to come back and saying, you know, we just finished St. Pat's today, put on the web that you, you're going to be on St. David tomorrow, et cetera. 
Is this a place where they can have quick access? I think it's basically public works that picks up the leaves, is it not? Well, so maybe that's, yeah, yeah, but yeah I just saw it here. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I uh, you know, the city gives you two or three dates, and if you miss the dates, you don't get your leaves picked up. So yeah. we have been continuously picking them up. Yeah. I noticed that date in there as well, mm -hmm. but the lady that phoned me at 7.30 this morning and woke me up to thank me for getting her leaves picked up, <laughs> they were picking them up as she phoned me, oh, so they're still working. Okay. And they wrote today, I saw them today. So. That's right. So I, I don't so in that in which case I don't know if it's I can follow up on that. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Marshall I guess it's coordinating coordinating that information and just getting up to date information, right? Yep. That's great. And these are all my yellow highlights. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of different places people can find that information mm -hmm. but uh, if we can help coordinate it I think that's a, that's a very good service we can provide at a fairly low cost. And not just coordinating but including them in the process. Of yeah, Send, sending out, a, finding out what the associations are, Whether they're willing out. to help organize or do something to contribute to the event. Yeah. Question. A quick question, uh, Ray, about the Oak Bay Highway Development Update um, and the suggestion that a design committee will be appointed early in the new year. Um, any idea, not individuals, but what, who is going to be represented on that committee? Is there, has there been any indication of that? Uh, those discussions were, were somewhat tentative when uh, uh, I met with the principal in uh, late November, I guess it was. And exchanged emails between that time and now, but we've not had an opportunity to sit down and go over it in any greater depth, but um, I believe the mayor's is brought into it. Yeah. I've been in touch, I've been in touch with uh, Dave Thompson, and, and what I think with this must be referring to, I saw the note too, that uh, design committee, I think he's, he's intending to start up and he's waiting to get instructions from uh, his new trustees as to starting up that same committee we had. We had two, uh, two councillors and Lorna, uh, and they had two trustees and a number of their staff. 
that was kind of chaired by Dave. So I anticipate that's the committee that's being referred to here. So it's a, it's a steering committee, planning committee. And we didn't make too many design decisions. I suspect that uh, we'll get to a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of it as the process goes along. So yeah. I'm not sure if that, that was my wording and whether that's uh, entirely accurate. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. and, and part of the, that committee also will hopefully recommend certain consultative processes. If, you know, if there's, there's going to be some changes in the design or, you know, trying to provide ongoing opportunities for the community to become involved, because that was one of the undertakings that they made early on. This wasn't just a design charrette today, right. and then we'll forget about the community. It was kind of a, an ongoing <coughs> process. And I, I think there's, I didn't bring my list of people, but I think I've already designated two people mm -hmm. to help out on that. Yeah, the two of you, because okay, you were yeah. the right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, yeah. yes, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, just a, a couple of small things, really. Just um, all right, we talked about this before, but I think that's really a great use of funding in terms of using the hydro dollars to help pay for people and improve that kind of stuff. That's really it's nice to see that that kind of stuff being done. I um, I have a, a, I just have one comment on the catering and rental flyer. Uh, I think that's much needed. I was also I, I talked about this briefly with you when you were driving around, but I do think it would be maybe we want to look at some mechanisms of tying um, you know events to catering, right? So there's Making it sort of a, an, an event thing for you know, business parties that would have it come for a skate and a meal. Um, it's a rare place where you have we have a licensed facility that actually takes underage people. We have uh, activity facilities that they can do a wide range of activities. Um, I think we could leverage that quite a lot to improve the catering because the, the catering numbers aren't spectacular, particularly at Oak Bay Rep. And I think <coughs> there's, there's ways of leveraging that personally that we could get more people in because you know it's just it's a unique place really. Um, having to schedule business <laughs> lunches and events and stuff like that. It's nice to be able to have places that family can go, but you still have to be around. Food, so. Um, so I think that was the only other one, because everything else was answered either here or by the Fisher earlier. So, um, okay. any more comments? I just wanted to comment that um, if you're going to um, <coughs> adopt the um, number the 16th, I just want to draw attention to the clerk's comments. So you should extract out the uh, the budget, uh, capital items, and the fees and charges. Right. Okay. So can we have a motion to uh, move to adopt the first set then with that uh, provide the seven to them? And then it would be appropriate to um, refer the, um, <coughs> sorry, the, uh, Operating and, and uh, capital items to estimates committee. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Should there be a motion for December seventh yeah. for those two? Yeah. yeah. Approval. Okay. Second. Second. since this is the first time that three of the councillors are seeing these statements, I'm happy to go into more detail if uh, any of you have other questions or would like me to. Um, yes, with specifically with the licences and permits, um, you'll see that we are considerably under budget um, by 240000 compared to where, um, the budget. And uh, in actual fact, we're better than we had expected to be. Uh, and the reason why is we had 
we had um, budgeted in a 375,000 in building permits from the Oak Bay High School project, which hasn't started yet. So, um, as you can see, uh, so without that 375,000, we're only under budget by 240, so we are well ahead. Um, it doesn't, that the fact that we don't have that uh, permit revenue from the Oak Bay High School won't have uh, an impact on our bottom line because the, the money was going to be used um, to be put into a reserve. Some of it was going to go into a reserve to eventually pay the $1 million grant that the council had agreed to pay to the school district. And the rest of it was going to go as a transfer to the capital works reserve for future capital projects. So without the 375,000, we just won't do those two transfers. Um, and the other question you wanted me to go into was water the water and sewer. Um, yes, when, when you look at the, um, the figures, the, uh, especially with the water, it looks like we're very close to budget. In actual fact, uh, the water revenues also includes a number of different items as well as just consumer fees. So um, when you take out those other ones, we're at 88.6% um, of budget as of November 30th. And when you consider that a, a large portion of water is used during the summer, we would expect to be actually ahead of the 91.67 rather than behind it. Um, so if we're looking, projecting and looking at what, if we brought in the same kind of revenue as we did in December of last year, of, of, two, of uh, 2010, um, we'd probably be at about 94% of what we had hoped to achieve. Um, however, of course, we're also then not paying for the water from the CRD, so uh, I'd expect there'd be probably a net shortage of about 103,000 <coughs> overall. Um, now, the, the good thing is that, um, good, um, or the offsetting side of things is that the capital expenditures are, um, as you can see, considerably under budget. So um, obviously we just we, we we aren't spending the money <coughs> that we had thought we would be, um, so we won't be able to reserve quite as much money to bring forward into future years. But um, because of this shortfall, and a similar discussion really applies to the sewer fund as well. Um, the uh, the sewer fund, as far as the, the but the capital expenditures for both water and sewer are under budget because our, our crews were diverted to do um, projects, the projects relating to the Oak Bay Beach Hotel. And with a limited crew, you know, they, they had to be used there rather than uh, on some of our other projects. If anybody has any other questions that uh, you'd like me to go through. I guess just so I'm clear, the <coughs> I mean, there are a lot of things that were scheduled this year for sewage and water upkeep and so forth mm -hmm. that weren't done this year. So right. those budgets are going to get pushed back into next year, essentially. Right. And we have to get that work done. So we're kind of behind times on that. So it, the yeah. numbers don't look quite as rosy as they look on here. They're right. Uh, well, and a lot of the, the capital projects are, um, are, are just sort of revolving, continuing, yep. um, relining and forth, replacing. Yeah. So they're not done this year, they're done the following year. It's, uh, and the money can be carried forward? Yes. Well, 100% of the costs, yes, we, we uh, get that all back from them. Um, oops. The, um, you can see the, uh, under the, uh, in the capital projects report, the Oak Bay Beach Hotel for sewer, the budget was originally 700 and almost 711, 600. Um, 
and that was because they had anticipate, anticipated probably having to do work through rock, um, and some of the work did not have to be done, and no rock blasting had to be done either. So, but of that, that 344,000 of actual expenditures to the end of November was completely reimbursed by the, by the hotel. And that work, I think, is now pretty well finished, is it not? Yes. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? If not, would somebody move approval? Uh, seconder? Any, any discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Contrary, carry. Turn the chair back to you, Mr. Chairman. Madam Chairman, regulatory section. All about the chicken. Yes, all about the chicken. So, um, is Roy is not here? So is somebody else just stepping yes. Are you uh, covering? Sir? Sure. Um, Roy in this one? <coughs> a while ago, um, this whole, whole issue of um, keeping chickens and chicken coops was referred to uh, staff because uh, there was some desire to um, make it available to, to smaller lots, but at the same time keeping in, in, in mind uh, that there do, does need to be a, a reasonable setback uh, to, to your neighbors. So um, what the Director of Building and Planning has done is, has gone off and uh, has done some research, looked at other municipalities, and he's come forward with uh, five recommendations. Uh, one is to reduce the area of the parcel upon which poultry are proposed to be kept to greater than 557 square meters, which is smaller um, than previously. Uh, introduce the number of poultry to be kept on parcels greater than 557.4 square meters and less or, or equal to, sorry, yeah. I'm reading too fast, <laughs> and less or equal to uh, 745 square meters to be three. Reduce the rear and, uh, this is where the, the, uh, the setbacks come in, reduce the rear and side lot line setback from 6 metres to 4.6 metres, so that's a bit of a reduction. And introduce a new rear lot setback that abuts a lane of 2 metres. And the reasoning for that is that you will have further separation because of the existence of the lane. So those are the four recommendations that are being made, so staff are recommending that it be re referred back to staff to uh, put that into bylaw form. Okay. Thank you. Will, will that require <coughs> public consultation when it comes back to us? Will it be will the public have an opportunity to comment on it? There isn't a statutory requirement per se. It's not a change to zoning. It's a change to the animal control bylaw. Um, oh, sorry. Actually, there are some changes to to, um, to setbacks. So actually, there would be. There would yes. be. Yes. Yeah. Just I, I've seen some of the history from this. I just didn't get here recently on this discussion. Um, as the, over the long history, since the chicken coops have been around for a while, I mean, mm -hmm. it seems like it's been pretty positively received by the community as a whole. Have we had anything in the way of complaints at all from the chicken coops that are up there? I haven't been here long enough. That hasn't certainly hasn't hasn't been an issue while I've been here. But uh, maybe somebody else around the table has more more experience or history on it. I don't. I don't think it's been an issue. I don't think there's been too many complaints. It's very positive. I've never received any complaints yeah. over on council about this. The complaints have been from the people who want to raise chickens. And the <laughs> We've never had a chicken's complaint. <laughs> <laughs> they're the ones. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I was uh, just wondering if why, um, why we would exclude anybody from like, the lot size. There are lots that are smaller and um, 400 square meters, which is about a 5,000 square foot. Yeah. I'm just wondering what the reasoning is behind excluding smaller lots. Well, I, I guess the, the, um, the overall reasoning is that if you get closer and closer to your neighbor, there's, there's more potential for nuisance, right. both from smell and from noise. Right. So that's the reasoning. But from one, like, could we num limit the number of chickens to one or two? Maybe? Well, there is a limit, um, three. three. It's, it, it was it was based on, on um, precedent set by other municipalities that right. have, sim have similar bylaws. So yeah. are there are I mean are there any municipalities? Do you know, Mr. Brennan, that have this bylaw for smaller lots? 
the, the reason I'm asking it, though, not to interrupt you, but um, is presumably the measure, the, the measure you're trying to bring in is based on the, the, the setbacks, not the size of the lot, because regardless of how large the lot is, it's the setbacks that would seem to be relevant in terms of the, um, the coop being a nuisance to the neighbor. Mm -hmm. So whether you had a 10,000 square foot or a 5,000 square foot property, where you put the coop would still be in compliance with the way the setbacks are set up. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm trying to figure out, I mean, just to follow up on Kelsey yeah. Kirby's question, is what is the logic then of the smaller lots? Because we do have a lot of those, so it does exclude mm -hmm. a lot of our residents from being able to do this chicken coop thing. And, and just to add to that, the reason this, I mean, I, I think other, others are talking about food security and whatnot, this would be something we're trying to, you know, not discourage is people trying to, you know, take care of their own food needs. So that's my question. I, I, I do see your point that the, the, the main factor here is, is the setback. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, um, Thomas is not here. He's the one who actually did the research. And um, I think the short, the short answer is, is that this is um, the, 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 the limit on the lot size is something that other municipalities use. Now, that's, that's, that's a good point. You don't necessarily have to use that. You, you could go, go based simply on setback if that's what you want. And if that's the direction you want to give the staff to, 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 yeah, to refer it back, that's okay, fine. Okay, I, I guess the other, just to pursue this just a little bit further, I'm sure there are some municipalities that do have a 5,000 5, mm -hmm. square foot lot size. Okay, mm -hmm. very much. But are there some that don't as well? I don't know, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. I, cause See, because most I, likely would be, say, the city of Victoria or Squamal, where, where you do have lots of small lots. Um, you're not going to have the same kind of thing in places like North Sandwich. Sandwich, right? no. Yeah. So does Victoria have that kind of limit? I don't you know, know. Yeah. I'm afraid. I don't See, that is what I, I would be quite curious about. I'm sure there are some that have that limit, but mm -hmm. I, I would imagine also, I'm guessing, that there would be some that don't as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I would just like to know of that, if that's what the research is based on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councillor. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, and there was one letter that we received. Um, I'm wondering if it was possible to reduce the side the side lot setback by one meter, and I'm wondering if that was taken into consideration, and if so, uh, the decision was obviously was made. Uh, meter pardon me? It went from six meters down to four. Oh, it did. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. I was looking at the wrong one, yeah. Okay, so that was obviously taken into consideration. Okay. Okay, uh, actually, it's Herbert, Councilor Herbert first. Well, I, it sounds like we're heading to sort of table this okay. and get some more information, but I seem to remember when it was discussed before that the that we spent a lot of time sort of deciding the, the, the optimal site for a chicken house, that the chicken house will be this big, and if you put it in the middle of a lot, then how big a lot do you need in order to get the setbacks? I thought that's, I thought that's where it all came from, and uh, maybe I'm wrong, but... Uh, I think that, if you go back far enough, I think that's that what That was part of the discussion, that it was like, we're going to have slots so skinny that we need to make, we need to relax the setback, that was, you Well, know, we, we, if, if this is a reasonable sized chicken house, like, where, where can you put it where you have the, the setback? I thought that's where we came from. Anyway. Uh, Councilor May, the Councilor, Professor Councilor Green, the Councilor May. Actually, my question was just answered. Thank you. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, just one other thing is, I did just, here just last week from somebody who lives in Nanaimo where they um, have got this a similar bylaw. It's exactly the same. And there have been, uh, they've had it in, uh, implemented for some time now. And there have been some complaints about rats for some uh, areas of the city. Mm -hmm. And so what they did is they um, required everybody putting in a chicken coop to have a certain kind of catch on the front for the debris. I, I don't quite, I can't quite explain it, but my point I'd just like to make is whether or not a kind of a containment so as to uh, mitigate the, um, I guess that would be take care of both the smell and the exposure of the debris would be something, I don't know if that's what you would build into a bylaw or just make a policy or to educate the community on, but I do know that seems to have been effective in 
addressing the rat problem in Nanaimo, as, as it was explained to me. Yes, thank you. In my experience, you know, I think I think public education is probably the best approach at this stage because enforcement becomes a huge issue if, if we become too restrictive or we enshrine these rules in a bylaw. I think that enforcement on, on this particular issue would, would be very challenging. Um, and I think as long as people are educated about practicing safe and healthy ways of, of storing food and and dealing with those issues around chickens, I think that that would may, maybe be the best approach initially. It does beg the it does beg the question of just how you know, if there is a problem, how you mitigate that, right? So it's nice to have some rules in place, mm -hmm. guidelines to kind of go turn back to, so that you can kind of people understand what the guidelines are. But I would agree. I think it's legislation tends to be a bit heavy for those kind of design things. Yeah, and as I said, it's un it's unfortunate um, that Ms. Thomason isn't here because he might have researched these things. He might have the answer to some yeah, of these I things. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so, um, but we can certainly get the answers to a lot of your questions from Mr. Thomas when he gets back. Mayor Duncan? Yeah, I, it strikes me that the point that was made in terms of maybe we should just go with sit-backs is a good one. So, which would mean that if you have a 30-foot lot, assuming we keep 15, if you have a 30-foot lot, you can't have one. Mm -hmm. But if you have a 40-foot lot, you can have well, like a 10-foot wide, which I don't know much about chickens, but that seems fairly uh, decent size, and then you can make it deeper depending on your lot size. So uh, I think that needs to be explored. That's one good way to kind of lift the, uh, the limits and be more fair to small lot uh, owners. Is there any other? Well, it sounds like we need some more information. So it does. I, sounds like it's going to go back. I would move we table it. Can and I get some more information? Well, before we do that, is it reasonable? To, yeah, is it reasonable to ask? Is this, if you, sure. anybody here wants yeah. to talk to this, yeah. has any other yeah. feedback? Yeah. Or? Well, I have some bylaws and I have some ideas towards this. Okay. Hey, come on. <coughs> so I um I was the, my name's Doug. I'm in New Hampshire, um, and I'm sort of the reason this all started a few years back, right. and. Um, so I have some some thoughts about <coughs> the current bylaw that we have. Like I needed a building permit. I needed three building inspections. Um, the price of my permit was 20% of my chicken coop budget. So I feel that there is some, some issues there. Um, but <coughs> the city of Vancouver, I think, is a really good bylaw that we should, as a staff, look at. They have a requirement of an education program where the people read, sign off, and these are just documents that are posted on their web page, and um, they're actually all quite good. And um, setting expectations to the resident about what, what they're actually endeavoring on. Like when I started it, I had no idea, I just knew that I wanted them. And so upon reviewing the city of Vancouver's bylaw, you'd actually go into it with a really clear picture. And they've actually painted it, like what they say is required for the amount of work. I don't do that much work. And um, <clears throat> I've had a really positive response from my neighbors and um, from the community uh, on my hands. And so I've dealt with things like rat problems and it's got everything to do with a good design of coop. And so it's guiding people into how to build the coop, how to meet the minimums. Um, I don't have rats in my coop because of how I built it and because of um, how I dispose of my debris and um, how I did the mesh into the ground. And so they're really basic principles um, of which I have all of it here. So um, Sanich, who is the latest in our regional district who did it, set it to 557 meters. Their goal was 95% of residents to get, I believe it was 95% of residents to get hens, and I think they got 90% um, based on what they did in their lot sizes. So they actually established a goal of how many residents they wanted to, to be able to have them. And then actually, um, I believe, came really close, like with a few within a few percent. And so I just, I'd like to encourage staff to look at City of Vancouver and um, <clears throat> to maybe not make a coop an accessory building. I mean, I technically added onto my carport. So I had to submit drawings of which my first ones were not approved. And then I had to resubmit drawings. And so luckily I own a business where we can do that. And so I can do elevations and everything. So that would have been quite expensive for just anyone. And um, <clears throat> but my family business, that was easy for us to get into AutoCAD and submit drawings. Um, but to have the building inspector to come out three times to approve my foundations, which were six fence posts, um, to approve all of that, seemed like a waste of our taxpayers' dollars. 
and um, and then <clears throat> for me to pay the money I did for the coop, we're talking 50 bucks, not a lot of money, but the way I built my coop was all recycled material, so it was significant in my $300 budget. So, so there's a few things I, I just would like to encourage staff to look at before they proceed in just changing the setbacks. There's, there's actually some opportunity here to make this work and make it easy for residents. <clears throat> and in the three and a half years that I've had hens, I believe most families come to me first. And um, so I've had nine people come in three years of which I know three have been outright told no. So nine in three years, I don't see, think we're gonna see 20% of families having chickens in Oak Bay. I don't think it's gonna become a huge, huge thing, but I think if we can take those people who are interested and educate them, then we'll have success, then we won't have enforcement, then we won't have SBCA problems. So just a good suggestion. I mean, I mean, I think you're, you're right. I mean, what we need to be doing is, is ensuring that there's an incentive built in into these projects and initiatives, not a disincentive, as long as it's done the right way and managed. Really. Well, and I'm not here to create work for staff. I am staff, <laughs> and so I don't want I don't want any extra work, but but I want this to be achievable and successful for the residents here. So I was lucky that we had skills to make this happen in, in my home. But it would have turned off. It turned off more people in the process I had to go through. So um, what we communicated as a municipality is that we actually weren't supportive in this initiative at all. Mm, yeah. <coughs> so you you mentioned that you didn't have a lot of problems because you'd done it the right way. Where did you go for the information? Um, <coughs> people, internet, and um, I took some workshops that were offered in Saanich. So I'm considering teaching them. <laughs> so because oh, great, it's at the rec center. Well, not well. I'm not allowed. I'm full time, so I wouldn't be able to do it at our rec center. But um, um, it, I people come to my house, and I'll walk them through an hour through my design. I'll give out my design to people, and um, give out tips. I, I don't have a problem doing that. And so I think I've made that pretty public. I mean, the mayor brought 150 people. Of that, about three people came back and found information about how to build their coops in Victoria. So I've been really receptive to doing it. It's beautiful. I've seen, I've seen it back there, and it's a really nice setup, and it's quite lovely. So. Up in the other question? Well, yeah, I guess my thing is I, I really like your, uh, your comment that you, where you said we should, we should, if we're going to do this, we do this so that it will be successful, so that people will be successful when yeah. uh, they're attempting to embark on this kind of project. So one of the things I was wondering is, have, what happens if somebody is, I, I don't know if it's in compliant with the bylaw or if this is becoming a nuisance mm -hmm. to neighbors. What do they resort to, like noise bylaws or nuisance bylaws? Like what There's, what there are certain regulations in the, in, the, in the animal control bylaw in, itself. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, okay. And there's also the noise bylaw, the anti-noise right. bylaw. Yeah. So the, there's, okay. probably a, there's probably a few regulatory right. bylaws already. Mm -hmm. A buy at a time. Not that bad. Yeah. Chickens don't make a lot of No. <laughs> In fact, our neighbors actually complimented me because they said that um, to hear my hens over the cars driving too fast on Hampshire, they'll take the hens. <laughs> it, if that helps. Because they do, they do get excited when they make an egg. Or if there's, <laughs> <laughs> or if there's a hawk or something there. Like they said off in the lawn. <laughs> And yeah, so that does, that does happen, but um, my kids are louder. So, <laughs> so what, I, can I ask just one more question? What could we expect in the general, part? like, I, I want, does anybody here know how many people, say in Victoria, have got coops or in other parts of the, the region? Like, what, what could we expect, I don't, not to aspire to, but what, it, in terms of the number of people that would do, do this once well, the it... Yeah, well, I know more kids in Oak Bay that the city doesn't know about mm -hmm. than I do about kids in Oak Bay that the city knows that exist. So I don't think we're talking about huge numbers, Sorry. but I think it's about setting the environment that you're encouraging. So we have more people here hiding them than we have that are allowed. Why are they hiding? Because they were rejected, couldn't make it fit, their lot was too small, or just didn't want to go through the process. Right. Or they have to pay $50 to fund fees to set up for posts. 
Well, no, I had to do that because I added onto my carport because it's deemed an accessory building. So then with the within the accessory well, building bylaw, I was adding on. You're still, <coughs> you're not really adding on to your carport, are you? No, I put a two by four in between it and when he left, I knocked it down. So if it's a freestanding building, it's an accessory building. Yeah. Uh, it's not just the, because it was uh, attached to carport. It's number 27 in the Oak Bay bylaw, which is without derogating from any requirement imposed by a bylaw regulating the application and permit process for the construction of buildings or other structures. So it's like that was the wording that made it included as an accessory building. Therefore, I was at making an addition to my carport. So. Well, I think we're probably all largely in agreement. Let's try and make this as sort of giving people the right to build something that's and, and giving clear guidance on it and making it reasonably straightforward. Clear and, guidance. Yeah. And, uh, the, you know, if they need help, they can get it, but for the most part, we can trust them. So I think the, the, the only question we have here, it sounds like, are the, um, uh, I guess, the setback question and uh, and whether that's that's adequate or if we need to have the, the lot size. Um, and if there's anything else you need to have in terms of, actually, that's pretty much it, really. I mean, there's the rat prevention thing, I think, comes back to, education more than it does on anything else, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, took a, I took a fair amount of notes in looking at the city of Vancouver, and, uh, mm -hmm. and um, looking at uh, um, if, if, there's, if there's municipalities that, that have no uh, minimum lot size and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and also maybe looking at uh, signage who are setting goals, yeah. take, a look at, take a look at that. So, so I, I took a fair no, number of notes there, so. Yeah, no, I think those are all. <coughs> so I just want to refer back to staff. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. We have one of the comments just a really quick question, <coughs> uh, Doug, through you, um, Councillor Murdoch. Doug, can I um, ask you, Saanich uh, hosted the workshops, it, so. It, it no, I did them through Howland. Oh. It wasn't the municipality, though, that hosted them. No, we're 52 weeks in the garden path, whoever that is. Oh, um, um, Carolyn Harriet. Yeah, Carolyn Harriet did it. Yes, and I can. And, um, the most bizarre thing I've ever done, but um, yeah. Okay. Thank and you. so it was private. Thank you very much. So, motion to refer this to staff for recommendations. Is that the appropriate, please, sir? Yeah. Okay. Second. Thank you. I'll bring up. I got two of here. Come back. Thank you. Thanks. Is there anybody else I should ask you before we? Did we vote on that? Pretty much said everything. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we have a vote. To mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Any opposed? So done. Thanks. All right, to you. There's no way to turn. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, do I move it on to the next person? Or we oh, yeah, you give it back to me. And I was yeah. just a little confused because regulatory here, but I didn't have a tab, and I thought it was no. just me, but yeah. others. Yeah. 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 We'll get that sort yeah. of yeah. 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 So we go over to land oh. use. Uh, yeah. um, yes, two items on the land use have to do with the um, Uplands um, building permit application process. One at uh, 25, these are fairly minor, by the way. Um, 2545 Lansdowne, um, the application uh, has been submitted to the advisory design panel for changes to the original drawings, which were approved in July. Um, again, fairly uh, fairly minor changes. Um, the recommendation from Mr. Thomason is that council recommend the proposed changes or approve the proposed, cha proposed changes from granite to cedar shingle siding to the base of the house. Um, and that's pretty much it. And the design uh, advisory design panel has approved that change. So, um, are there any questions or comments? I would only really recommend approval to council. And are there any? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to comment or ask questions about this particular property? Uh, a motion to approve, uh, Councillor Herbert, and a seconder. Uh, all in favor of the motion? Any opposed? Motion carried. I just know it wasn't. You mentioned it was um, uh, Mr. Thomas's recommendations. Yes. It was. He was just basing it on. Basing it on the. Re re okay. I beg your pardon. Basing yeah, yeah, no, his fine. recommendations were based on fine. the uh, recommendations of the advisory design. Thank you for that correction. Uh, and the next one. Um, 
And then there's, of course, a letter from the owners requesting that change. The next one is uh, the property at 2990 Beach Drive. Um, and this one, again, some changes to the original plans. Um, and they simply have to do with uh, proposed changes to the colors uh, of the windows to the new residential design. And again, those uh, changes were uh, approved by the design advisory design panel. So again, any questions? Uh, and the seconder. Uh, anyone from the audience that would like to comment or ask questions? No. And I would just comment that I think the, um, the changes that are being proposed will, in fact, uh, enhance and help the, the building blend into the landscape, which abuts Oak Uplands Park uh, more effectively than the, um, the colors that were originally suggested. So um, uh, uh, all in favor of the motion. Any opposed? Uh, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we move into the active transportation and community section. Uh, Michelle. Thank you. Um, so then we have one item to get uh, in the uh, transportation area, and that's uh, we have a, an appeal of a decision um, from engineering services on uh, the extension of the uh, yellow lines and no parking zone. We only got an email that um, um, uh, on the, the matter, and I was just wondering if we could ask Steve maybe some questions before mm -hmm. we uh, go to sure. it. Yeah. Um, Mr. Marshall. Um, I went up there and I, I was wondering, you know, the, uh, you know, was there a real issue with parking? I didn't, there, of course, when I went, there was a single car on either It might be useful if I just uh, go over quickly what the process is that yeah. we incorporate on these sorts of requests. Uh, it's a pretty standard process. Any time somebody wants to uh, um, extend yellow line, it's usually to do with their perception that there's a line of sight uh, deficiency. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a relatively empirical process to go out there and, and measure what the lines of sight are that are available. And if the lines of sight are deficient, then we basically uh, recommend that a traffic control order be generated to add the yellow line. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, in this particular case, um, the same process was incorporated, and um, I believe it was checked out twice already. And uh, we always tell people that uh, they may not agree with the engineering uh, decision on it, and the, the case of last resort is to, is to put it in front of the council in case there are, there are extenuating uh, circumstances that council are aware of, and at, at council's discretion, they can overrule the engineering decision. And th that process is quite standard for these kinds of things, as it is for many other traffic pertinences, such as crosswalks and that, that sort of thing. But in terms of um, this particular one, we, we have looked at it twice, and um, I know that the, the people there feel that it should be longer, and um, I, I guess other than that, I can't really um, see anything other than what we've done uh, on the last two occasions from a period of point of view. Yeah, so have you done a, you've done a, the last two times, uh, what, what the, the measurements were done and the lines of sight uh, indicated that were, there was an um, um, inadequate, uh, was it 50 kmh, we did traffic counts up there and we determined that the uh, the 85th percentile traffic speed is 53 kilometers per hour, mm -hmm. which is almost bang on what the posted speed limit is. So there's there's not a there's not the uh, speeding problem per se. That's not to say that there's not the odd situation right. where you have people exceeding the speed limit. And there's also another situation too that people oftentimes bring to our attention is that if there's a large vehicle park there, it impairs their ability to see, and that's a very valid point. And uh, but we don't have any control over that. We can't really factor that into the assessment point of view. You know, you, you basically base it on the, 
on the lands inside. Um, I suppose if there was a large vehicle there parked in a, a, you know, constantly parked there, it might be different, and I'm not sure what, what the situation is here in that regard. And the other, the other thing was just to say that uh, um, there's an existing 45 meter site distance, and that provides um, adequate lines of sight according to the regulations again. Um, and um, of course, there's different different driver abilities, and I understand that at the Elkins Estate is a, a large contingent of elderly people, so you know that, that could factor into decisions that council want to incorporate here. But uh, uh, we didn't. But when we look at these things, we don't do a, a tally of the the age of the, the applicants. We just look at it purely. Well, I guess I'm going to speak in favor of allowing this appeal. The first thing I'd like to do is describe the situation a little further than Mr. Marshall did. There are two entrances to this facility, the west entrance and the east entrance. The west entrance has a yellow line extending west from it, which is at least twice the length of the yellow line at the east entrance. It's at least two times. The uh, the, uh, the east entrance has a much shorter line extending to the west. I've been up there a couple of times, and if you, the day, the last day I drove along, I very carefully turned around in Henderson Rec Center, bearing in mind I'm not supposed to make a U-turn, and driving down the road, first of all, there's people all over the road with dogs, not complaining about it, I'm just telling you everywhere you look, there's people chatting on the side of the road, in the middle of the road, there is an enormously large pickup truck parked right up to the yellow line. And before I could see the entrance to the east driveway, I was almost at the rear end of that truck. So I really don't think it's long enough. I don't know whether you're aware there was a horrendous accident up there about a week ago where somebody tried to pass, slid on the ice, and hit another truck head on. It, it's not the most pleasant place to, dive, to drive when there are people all over the road. And, and there are regularly, and I commend them for taking their dogs for a walk. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying it's an awkward place to go. So I will, I will certainly vote in favor of granting the appeal. I realize that we have a set of rules and we need to follow them. Uh, we've already, th these rules are already not in place for the west entrance. And uh, I really think we should duplicate what has happened on the west entrance and the east entrance. If I can just jump in there real quickly with regard to the west entrance, the recommendation that was put forth by engineering at that time was not to extend the yellow line. So I guess council decided there was a rationale for extending it. So um, I, I presume that the same logic may prevail today. <laughs> but there's been, there's been quite a few traffic control orders that have been generated from the upland estates, uh, at least five. So it seems to be a, quite an increase in uh, non-parking in the area and knowing that parking is always a premium is is another factor that we consider when we look at these things. For, but not taken up by the strata. Like park? Because the, the uh, strata has indoor, or indoor parking, off-site parking. So the parking at a premium is for the uh, university students. And the the university students, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I actually would agree with Councillor Herbert. Um, I did visit the, uh, the uh, area in question uh, with my dog, with the express purpose of, of taking my dog for uh, the exercise around the uh, UVic um, uh, exercise area. Um, and so that was on a busy holiday weekend. And there was quite a bit of traffic parked on both sides of the street at the time. Uh, but certainly there were still spots available. So I don't think the reduction of two spaces is going to negatively impact or cause any particular hardship to the people that park there. Uh, that would be my, um, my estimation. Um, and I think, um, and I looked at the specific gate in question, and in fact, uh, I think that same vehicle that you re referenced, Councillor Herbert, or one very similar to it, was parked in that spot. So I could see the potential for some accidents to happen, particularly in a case where uh, perhaps the response time, uh, if if some of the residents are uh, more senior, if the response time is reduced, for example, to react to an oncoming car, if there is a large vehicle in the way, 
Um, I think that it's it's not a bad suggestion, and, and I would support it too. And, and if, if there's a way that we can mitigate the potential for accidents up there simply by extending that that yellow line, um, I would be supportive of it. And certainly our, you know, um, I, I'm sure that my attention has lapsed to, to some extent. On occasion, when I'm up there, if the dog gets out of the car, you know, it decides to take off across the street. Yes, there are lots of people and lots of dogs in activity. So, yes, if we can make this, if we can increase and enhance the sight lines, I'd be very much in favor of that in this case. <coughs> but thank you for doing all of your homework. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, th and thank you for your research and comments. And I too will support the request for um, to appeal the decision. And the reason I will do so is that there is quite a clear rationale laid out by the residents in their letter. I, I believe it has merit. Um, I also went to the site, and I sat there actually parked for a while. And I I I believe that volume and speeding are potential issues there, if not already issues there. And I think around any driveway uh, entry or exit. That's always a fairly potentially dangerous area if sight lines are compromised by parked vehicles, particularly those that are large, like trucks and vans and so on. So I, I would be, um, <coughs> I, I, I will support the request to extend these zones. I have a question. Um, uh, if, um, I take it that reaction time, this kind of stuff, is based on an average and average demographic. That's correct. Yeah. So you haven't taken into account that this might not be an average demographic no, there, so um, more sight line correct. might be needed there for a specific reason as to this sort of high concentration of that's right. older drivers. It's pretty really hard to, um, to you know, quantify that. You know. Sure. Mm -hmm. so. And the other question I had was, what is the length of the other one, the other um, uh, anomaly that we have up there? Approximately you know, two stall lengths longer. Is that adequate, the other one? Is the other one adequate? Well, the first one, you mean? No, the first one we put The west one. Yes, I'm just looking over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. That seems to be, is that adequate? It's just that so we have some kind of yardstick to pull us. No, it's fine. No, we're only, we're only, the only one we have concerned is the one that's being discussed here. No, no, what I'm saying is if the first one is the right length, yes. make the second one the same length. The first one was extended and incorporates a fire hydrant. So it's longer than actually we're talking about here. So uh, in this case, it doesn't involve a fire hydrant. It's just asking for two additional so I just Two additional current staff to do some you know, kind of reasonable length, whatever they think is reasonable, you know, when we're heading. Yes, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm always torn. I don't want to step on the staff because there's you know, logical rules of these things, I kind of like following them for the most part. Uh, I'm sure, is 12 meters the minimum allowable there or is it for that scenario, or is that, where does that actually fit into the overall scheme of things? The 12 meters is being, as far as just the uh, assessment that the, the applicants have come up with. That's, no, 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 no. That's what it, it is exists, currently 12 meters. The 12 meters, and then they're asking for an additional. Yeah, is that, the, is that sort of, is that what you said, the minimum of allowable there? Well, it's based, on the, it's based on the speed of the vehicles mm -hmm. and from a design engineer who goes out there and he actually sits at the, at the property line, he looks up the street and determines what the distance is when he first sees a vehicle. And in this particular case, it's, uh, I believe, um, it's 45 meters of line of sight when the, when the vehicle first came on. And that's determined at that speed to allow the three second response time. Right. And that, that's taken from the Traffic Association of Canada regulations right. and they they no doubt do um, so three seconds is the normal thing uh, two and a half seconds here by your measure on things in terms of that uh, yeah. yeah people speeding at 65 kilometers an hour yeah obviously if somebody's exceeding the speed limit then it's going to reduce it somewhat but you have that anywhere I mean if you look down Fall Bay Road for example we've got an extremely busy street there and uh, if we were to double up on yellow line that's down there there would be a real shortage of parking but um, obviously we, you know. I, I have just a question I'm not clear on, because um, it's gated off, I'm not sure. Is there a choice of exits from the thing? Like, no, it, I think there's only the two exits. No, no, there's two exits, but there's one that has a good line of sight, one that has a bad line of sight. Is there anything preventing people who live there from choosing the one with a good line of sight when they're exiting? Okay. 
Uh, that's one question. Um, I mean, I guess I also look at, I mean, the entire city has people pulling backwards out of their driveways on 50 kilometer an hour streets with zero visibility and people park within three feet of their driveways all the time. Uh, we managed to survive that. I'm, I'm wondering if there's an, some use of also just, you know, uh, you know, putting a sidewalk there for people crossing the road or signs just noting that there's a, there's a driveway up ahead or anything else that would sort of alert people to the fact that it's, I mean, it's a busy spot. There's you know, dogs everywhere. People tend to slam on the brakes at that point. Um, I'm not sure that I feel there's enough justification here to override the staff on this based on that. But see, although it's a, it's a compelling letter and well written, and uh, um, certainly there's, I, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit torn on this one, but I don't, um, I'm not sure that I see there's enough. Given that it's not a unique situation um, and there's an alternate exit available, not uh, to justify that personal. Thing. <laughs> Anyone want to speak to the issue? Yeah, we would like to speak to it. Okay. That'd be great. And I tried to convince the one who's sitting on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> if I could, can sure. I come up to the table? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're here for. I'd like to, uh, first of all, thank you all for hearing this appeal. I appreciate very much your time. I. Uh, Name, so oh, sorry. On the We're recording this. Of course. My name is uh, my name is Earl Anthony. I'm chairman of the Strata Council, and I have Dale Francis with me. He's the, the vice president. Um, uh, Uplands Estates has been there for 30 years, and uh, we've never had a problem with this kid. And so you wonder, why am I here? Well, two years ago, the world changed because what happened is the university relocated the uh, entrance for the dog walk and placed it directly opposite the east gate. What that changed was suddenly we had full parking adjacent to the gate on both sides. And not only that, they're not just normal cars like you'd find on Oak Bay Avenue. People have big dogs and they big, big vehicles to bring their big dogs. And so it's not unusual to have the parking lot fully occupied by SUVs or trucks or you know large vehicles that you just cannot see by. Uh, before they brought the dog around there, there'd be the odd car park there. You could look beyond the car and easily see oncoming traffic. And so in the last two years, we've noticed a marked change in the in the what's occurring at the East Gate, and that's why we're here. The the um, the changes that occurred were really three things. The increased parking that I've mentioned. Secondly, the nature of the traffic that's occurred at, because of that uh, parking. You got people running across the street with their dogs, some of the dogs on a leash, some not. They got kids with them often. Everybody's all excited. They're taking their kid to the dog run. So they're darting them around. So when you pull out of the East Gate, you've got not just the traffic to worry about, but all this other stuff that's going on. The, the, uh, uh, the, other, the other factor, I think, is that the, we're talking the type of driver we're talking about. I mean, the, these people are old. The people who live in Oak Bay Lodge are older people. I'm sorry, not Oak Bay Lodge. <laughs> yeah. I used to be on the board of directors at Oak Bay Lodge. And I, I knew I was going to do that. Uplands Estates, they are, they are older people. And, and their, reaction, their reaction times are slower. And the reason that Dell and I are here to represent those people, they have difficulty leaving the East Gate. Now it's true they can drive all the way through the development and go to the West Gate, but many of them live you know, at that end of the development. And it's much more convenient to go to the East Gate. And in order to allow them to do that safely, if they just had two parking spots, just extended two parking spots, then they would have a line of sight that would allow them to see an oncoming vehicle. And in the notes I prepared, you know, if a car is coming at 65 and, and you've got a, a car park there, you've got 2.5 seconds. So you're an older person. One, two, bang. That's not very long. One, two, bang. And you're, you're there. So it's, it's difficult for them. And many of them don't drive at night because you know, they're, they're, they drive deliberately during the day. And so when they quote, and of course that's when all the cars are parked there, 
because few people take their dog for a walk at night. And so at the time when they want to use their car, all these vehicles are there. I recognize that what we're asking, and your point is a good one, is that once you, if you grant this one and everyone else, everyone who's got a blind driveway is going to be in the car. So we recognize we're asking council for a special consideration for this special situation. And we think we have a relatively unique situation here, given the type of driver, the type of vehicles parked, the type of traffic that's occurring there. We think uh, we, we, we think we got an argument for a special case. And that's what we're here tonight to talk about. Mary? Yes. From you, how, how many people live and how many drivers Six. are there in Uplands Estates? There are 64 units in yeah. Uplands Estates. Uh, the, uh, I would say the average age is um, uh, 65, and, uh, and some, yeah. maybe a little older, yes? Through you, um, and what would be the average number of vehicles per unit in your estimation? Uh, about 1.5. 1.5. Half the people, half of the units are occupied by a uh, uh, one person, right. uh, and so they would have one vehicle. Of course, they have visitors coming. A lot of people who are leaving the gates are, in fact, visitors. So potentially, there could be, in the neighborhood of well over 100 cars, exiting or entering uplands. Yeah. In a day, yes. In a day. Yeah, easily. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nancy, did you, sorry, did you have any comments? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> did you have anything? I thought you had, had to put your hand up earlier. No, I, no I, 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 I actually, it's been answered uh, by the presentation. So. One other question um, about um, is there a bus route on that on that stretch? No. We've, uh, we've applied to the Transit Authority several times to reroute one of the buses that go to the university yeah. along there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah. residents now have to walk up to Henderson yeah. to catch the bus. Yeah. And so, uh, but we've been unsuccessful. Um, and uh, we will continue to try that. That would be excellent. It's a good option for people that uh, are finding driving. But I, the only reason I'm really here is because of the dog run. You know, that had not occurred. Yeah. You know, we, we've existed for 30 years, and, and it was fine. Yeah. But this uh, this change has just caused a major change in what's what's really happening at that. Did move the gate, or did they just close the alternate gate that was there? There were there previously there were two gates into the dog yeah. the dog run. One up near the corner, and yeah. one farther down. They closed both and put everyone into one spot. And well, I think, I, I can't speak for the university, but the one up on the corner was very dangerous because not only were people running across the board, they were across the road, they were also on a corner, right. which made a lot of hair. They yeah. also drove the neighbors next to that gate absolutely crazy because they couldn't park anywhere near the house. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, there's some logic in the whole thing about um, driving our dogs to a dog run letting them run around and then driving them home rather than walking the dog, maybe, without people using use the car at all. But, you people know. use that dog park from all over the place. <laughs> right? They do. Yeah, well, you have people there from all over. Just walk, I, walk I would with your dog instead of walking, driving to a dog run and then it's an walking around. You know what I'm saying? It just I would, uh, seems I would, a little crazy. I would move to grant the appeal. <laughs> Second. We just need to know what it is, what it means. Yeah, two, uh, two, 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 two spaces. To extend by two car lanes. Two, two car lanes. That's that, what they've asked for. Two smart car lanes. Oh, they've asked no. for. <laughs> they've asked for 10 new years. Two right? Mercury Grand Marquis spaces. 10 meters. <laughs> 10 meters. Is that, okay. I mean, that's, that's, maybe we can that's a bit more than two car lanes, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, well, the bylaws stipulate. Uh, oh, somebody else wanted to speak. Seven to meters of stall, so yeah, it could be as much as 14 to come up. So. Yeah, we can just speak. Why okay. didn't you just ask him this? the university if they could move the gate see if that sorts out the situation and go oh, from there. I assume you tried that, have you? Yeah. Well, I don't, I mean, myself, I lived in Oak Bay for a long time and I've seen people come out of those gates. The first thing is, I think all that entranceway was made 
too small to start with. The walls are too high, so even if you get out, you can't kind of see a flicker of something coming along. We, and that would be more in, I guess, when we pass plans to accept them coming out in those things, because you have that same issue at the Carlton House where they put the big post up at the entrance. People creep out and stop, they can't see. We yet have shrub and fence bylaws at corners that say, no, they can't be over this high. So you've got the kind of the similar situations, but we don't apply the rules to one, we apply to the other, but it's the same people seeing. I mean, and I think, yes, if it's going to save somebody from getting hit or whacked up here because I'm getting old, I might be up there one day and I might need an extra second. But, um, we're just going to have this come up again unless in a design stage in the future you don't look at these things. Yeah, this was a historical anomaly that not all council was in favor of at the time, but it is what it is. I was getting back to your question there, um, Thompson Murdoch, with regard to the uh, the length. You know, the writer has asked for 10 meters. It's not a, uh, a it's not a, a discrete number of spaces, it's simply the distance he's asked okay. for. So, I mean. That's fine. I mean, if you want to go for motion. I'll make meters. the motion to grant what they asked for, 10 meters. I mean, the, the other thing that one could do is you could, you could measure the distance, you could take 10 meters off and then you could, you could uh, go all the way down to the next opening. And then taking your bylaw spaces, you could see, okay, how many spots do we get in here? Maybe. It has, Maybe we could afford 11 meters instead of 10, but it would be basically optimized. But it's not I, I, I changed my most to say 10 meters. And <laughs> that's what's that? reasonable under the circumstances. Yeah. On the other hand, if you need an extra space and you go to 9 meters, you know, I mean, not only do you guys are crank, if, if taking more than 10 meters reduces it from you know, the remaining space, I don't know if that's going to measure. Would it be reasonable to say 8 to 12 meters, depending on what's, what's reasonable to engineer it or something? It depends <laughs> what you park there. You might park all no, sprint no, cars they can, they can do another review. Well, what's wrong with 10 meters? Yeah. Fair enough. It's simple. Can I just ask, you didn't have a chance to answer the question about the moving the gate, the university's response to moving the gate. We approached them about that for an entirely different reason, because we thought the gate was unsightly. And we asked them to move it. And, uh, they were very, very resistant. And uh, I, I don't think we'd be successful now in moving the gate. And the, the council may talk to them, but we were totally unsuccessful in having them try to move the gate. Okay, so where are we at here? So we have a motion It was to seconded, I think. I seconded it. To uh, <coughs> add 10 meters to the existing yellow line. Shall I call the question? I think that would be a good time. Good idea. Okay, excellent. All those in favor? All those opposed? I'll tell you how many. It's an interesting <laughs> job, and somebody's got to do it. Huh? Sure. Motion carries. Okay, back, okay. Uh, back to me, and then over to, uh, to John again for. Um, Public work. Thank you for coming. More bumps yeah, thanks in the road. Guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. There's not okay. chickens, it's bumps in the road. I uh, <laughs> I don't know whether Mr. Money is with us tonight. Mr. Money isn't so. I'm a little confused with this issue in that it was received or sent in September, and um, Mr. Burnett got it in September and spent some time putting asphalt in the odd pothole in this little trail-like section of road that goes through there, knowing full well that the asphalt wouldn't stay because it was the rainy season and it, you can't really do a permanent job on it when it's raining. I did drive it and have a look at it. There are some potholes in it. I spoke to Mr. Barnett about it again, and uh, so he is going to have another look at it, and hopefully when we, uh, when we win and if we get some dry weather, he'll try and make the uh, repair more permanent. I'm not quite sure there's much else I can add to it. So my only comment was, um, I, I use that pathway as well a lot, um, well, five times a week actually. And um, uh, when we're talking about the active transportation plan, I think that really is a route that, uh, I'm not sure if it's mapped out on the Oak Bay 
trust on the board of it is, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it is a, a you know, a, a no, I understand. place that, you know, we're trying to encourage that yeah. kind of view. So, you know. I thought, well, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. I thought it, I didn't know that it went further past the circle down Midgard, though. I thought it went mm -hmm. up. Maybe not. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's that bumpy, craggy yeah. road, which is yeah. lovely to ride through. But it is when the, when it starts to get dusk, it's hard yeah. to see them on rainy nights. It's yeah. hard to see it as well. Yeah. And, and it's, there's no light to there. Yeah. I'm no. not suggesting that that may be. But, um, Most of the residents seem to uh, be happy with the way it is. But anyway, yeah. you know. But I realize there's, there's three or four big, uh, there's a couple of big potholes in it yeah. now, and I will uh, chase them on it. It's also a risk management. Somebody comes down there at great uh, speed and bang. And I actually had that problem going down Henderson. There was a, quite a divot right near a drain. Uh, and uh, they just collapsed a little bit. I nearly lost control yeah. on my bike at about uh, 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. That, that, there, there was some light in there. Right? You guys we, fixed it, which is good. But had I fallen, gone on in front of the bus, uh, I suspect there had been a loss. We actually, I'm sure you've noticed, there's a lot of potholes around at the moment, and uh, I don't know whether it's, uh, I don't exactly know why there seems to be more, but it's, uh, anyway, I'm sure that Phil is trying his best. No, 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 I know that. Yeah, this just does sort of come back to that question of appropriate amounts of money to spend on road repairs and so forth, and mm -hmm. we're kind of falling behind the curve and getting to the well, I, structural. Yeah, I think I think we are. I like I, I don't know that if we put this on the list of roads to be repaved that it would ever reach the top because yeah. it's it's not that kind of a road. But uh, but we have some other roads which are really breaking up and uh, like up by Commotion College is one where it's really in bad. The base is going and so I'm I'm doing a pre-sales job for the estimates debate that we really need to figure a way to put a little more money in. But yeah. Anyway, I don't know uh, I don't know whether there's uh, I don't know, uh, Mr. Administrator, whether we finished, followed up with this guy or I, I was a little confused why it appeared now. Um, I, I honestly I don't know that that would have been the clerk would have put it on the agenda. Um, like I don't know whether it appeared because he he called her and asked her what had happened to it, but I also because it's pretty old. I think that it was it was resubmitted. I think it was this is the second time he's emailed. Uh, I think oh, she re she replied and then he emailed again. Oh, I see. Okay. So but this one is dated one. September, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I, well, so I think we're missing some, yeah. some of the other emails that went on because okay. I seem to recall something else about this earlier. So I, I would I probably just, I don't know whether we need to do anything with it, do we? Well, I mean, other than refer the issue to estimates, but it's going to be dealt with estimates. Yeah. Anyway, when it comes okay, to, let's uh, do that. Yeah. Maybe somebody would move it to estimates. The only, the only problem with referring stuff to this to estimates is, uh, is Next to impossible to come up with an estimate with that unless we have some criteria around which to estimate. And when you get into yeah. an area such as this, um, we're saying fill the potholes. Oh, estimates. Uh, if you're just filling the potholes, that's just maintenance yeah. issue. I, I think I wasn't just, talking so much about um, this specific issue, with the, the issue of what roads we're going to pave and so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. In 2012, we'll deal yeah. with estimates. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I will follow up with Phil and make sure these potholes. <coughs> Would you have for just motion to receive this? Right? Yes. Did you move that? I, I, yeah, I'll move that, but I, I just wanted to make a comment. Can I make a comment? Let me get it seconded. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved and seconded. Comment? Um, comment being that this is not the first time we've had a, an email recently about potholes and, and um, repaving services for cyclists. Mm -hmm. um, there seems to be a lot of complaints, and um, I myself have a few complaints uh, as a cyclist. And so, But if this particular site was to take in, uh, a different road, like Linkley's or the upper end of um, Island, for example, they may bring forth the same types of complaints. So it just so happens that his route is on this one. Oh, but this is a really big, wide, you know, well-used route. Yeah. And it's a nice, quiet yeah. route as well, yeah. because yeah, it goes through the, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's a, a route I could do. Yeah. Yeah. routes that the yeah. Boulevard Transportation Group came up with yeah. for cyclists. So, I mean, this is one of those corridors that we want to Yeah, we, we were sure talking at the staff level quality. here with regard to this 100 foot right of way here. This might be one where you might want to have a dedicated uh, cycle path, per se. 
rather than uh, getting tied up with the actual board itself. As long as you got the money, yeah. Anyway, it's been moved and seconded. You had another question? Yeah, I just have a process question related to something like this, if I may ask it. Um, what is the follow-up with complaints and uh, situations like this? How do we know that this has been concluded by staff? Is, is there some way of following up with council? Yeah, all the correspondence is followed up with. What um, <laughs> Ms. Hilton will do is uh, she'll, she'll uh, get the response from Mr. Barnett in terms of what he can or cannot do. Right. And, and what, what, what he's going to do, and then she will respond to, to the letter writer and, and tell him what's being done. And then does council see a copy of that response or not? Not no. normally, no. Not thing. normally. This, it's, it's, just, it's just sort of routine, but yeah. Okay. It's just sometimes if we get comments directly or mm -hmm. emails directly, understanding what the follow up process is and what has been said by staff so that we don't go off on a tangent or that our responses are either inconsistent or um, okay. inaccurate. I think that's, so I'm just wondering how that works, Mark. But you don't have to answer that tonight. I just Well, and th I mean, that, that is a good point because there's, there's, I mean, certainly there's certain things that uh, it is incumbent on staff to, to um, follow up with council to let you know what's happened. But a lot of it, we don't want to burn you with it because it's such routine right. things. So I guess there is a sort of, sort of you know, a gray area as to, you know, how much feedback we're going to give you. Um, I don't know, we have something else you can look at in the communications it <laughs> issue. Might, it might be good. <laughs> solve that, right? it An might, environment. Anyway. It might be a good so topic I, for um, a joint meeting with staff, you know, our, our next joint council staff mm -hmm. meeting. Sure. Mm -hmm. If we yeah. put that on the agenda. Yeah. So how we know, how we're aware that things have been followed. Thank you, Mark. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Mr. Mayor, I have one other question. I have another tab in here called Uplands. Yes, I did too. I, did, I was yeah. going to mm -hmm. be inquiring yeah. about that. Who is in charge of that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. you gotta, you got to forgive me. It's, it's, it's been a real that. disconnect. I, I was away before Christmas, and Lauren was away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is well, away now, <laughs> so bring we, up the, the we haven't been communicating very well. Yeah. Sorry oh, about that. No. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah, we'll sort that, that out. Question as well. yeah. Okay, in, in that uh, case, I'm going to entertain now. It's back to me. Enter <laughs> yes, motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. I did. Uh, discussions all in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. Now, before we leave, Jason has asked me to hand this out. Video, conference, video recording of council. You prepared it for us, and uh, Jason, our, the Ross, the videographer, so I'll hand some down this way. And uh, this is his modern democracy yeah. movement. What are you up to here, Jason? We'll read that. Now, uh, any comments on how this works? Uh, yeah. It's nice to have people actually it? with us, right? Close did to you. How did I would, the audience I would not see like you? to have my back. Yeah. Oh, I see. People actually shook we hands there before they left. <laughs> we haven't seen that before, right? <laughs> Yeah. That was very good. Yeah. So yeah, people are working good. together. Yeah, we're right. working collaboratively. <laughs>